Okay, we're here with Sports Center anchor Jay Harris. Jay, welcome to the welcome. Say hello to the students. <laughs> hello, students. Um, and uh, they're very quiet. So you've been Can't here since two thousand three. Yes. Pretty good run. Uh, what's so far. It, what's it been like for you as far as being hosting this this great uh, Sports Center franchise? It's cool. Every time I walk into the studio and I see the word Sports Center on the wall, I'm like. That's not bad. <laughs> That's not bad. So when you were, I mean, was this a destined, was this uh, when you were coming up in the business, mm -hmm. you know, in the 90s mm -hmm. and you're graduating now, you're getting involved, was mm -hmm. this a place that you, was this a goal for you to get, mm -hmm. to, so tell us. No. How did you end up here? Uh, I'll give you the short story. I, I got into news first, radio news and then TV news. And... Um, and I was in TV news in Pittsburgh, I uh, sent a tape to a buddy of mine who worked here just to get his critique. And he showed it to some folks and they said, hey, they like you, they want you to come and audition. And I'm like, oh, audition for what? And they said, you know, ESPN, I do news, so you do sports. He's like, just come in and audition. And my wife was like, just audition, because you watch it all the time, just, just go. You've never been to Bristol, just go. So I did. Um, they were bringing in five people, I think I was number three. And they stopped at me. They liked me. I don't know what I did. Um, I know what I did. I just I wrote my audition because we write our own stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was just I was just silly with the highlights. I just like to play with the highlights. And um, my buddy called me back after I interviewed that day. Would have seemed like seventeen different people. Called me back and they said they want to hire me. And I'm um, like I, I I don't really want to work. For ESPN, because that wasn't my mindset. I was in. I went <laughs> so everyone wants to work for this company, and yeah. you get an offer, and you're like, I, I don't think so. I don't know. You know what I did? Well, I'm, I'm being honest, it, because my mindset was I was in the news, the whole news thing, and it's it's all the same. We're just telling stories about games as opposed to politics, um, which can be termed games depending on. But that's another story. <laughs> um, yeah, because the Today Show, Good Morning America, that was my career goal path in the news business. So I told him no. And he called me back and then they really wanted to hire me and he told me about the job and we got into it a little bit and it, was, it sounded cool and all, but I just wasn't something I wanted to do. Called me back again and they said, well, what would it take to get you here? They really want to hire you. And we went back and forth and back and forth and ultimately my wife got up the legal pad with the pros and cons right. and with the Disney benefits alone, 13 years later is the best decision that she ever made. <laughs> I'd have messed it up. But you know, once, like I just said, once I got into it and I realized that, you know, this is everything I always wanted to do in broadcasting, is just from a sports angle. For years I hosted the six o'clock sports center and that's the evening news and sports. Now I do uh, the, the morning show. Which is the Today Show. Pretty much, yeah. Um, so it's, it's so what? It, it wasn't a destination, but I'm glad I got here. So, so what, what compelled you when you did that audition tape that I'm going to have fun with these highlights? Obviously you watched it, mm -hmm. but did you kind of... Did you kind of go into that? Well, I have nothing to lose. I'm just going to have have fun here. No, or? it wasn't my mindset. I just I just was me. I remember it was a basketball game, and someone was in Dirk Nowitzki's face, and they were jawing at each other. And I like to to pantomime and put voices to people and imagine what they're saying. They're going back and forth and back and forth. And and I said, your mama. Oh, why do you have to talk about his mom? And I guess they liked that. And it was I was just being me. I wasn't thinking about, you know, how can I do this or whatever. I just was being me. When you were coming up, speaking of someone who was themselves, when you were coming up and, and, and consuming as a viewer of mm -hmm. SportsCenter, what did you think when Stuart Scott started doing what he did in, in, in the 90s? I was mad at Stuart because he was getting paid a whole lot of money to do the things that we were doing and saying for free. <laughs> I mean, we no, we love Stuart, watching Stuart, because I was like, yeah, because that's how we, you know, talked and, and joked and cracked on each other, and and it was kind of like we're about the same, we're a, same age, a year apart, um, you know, same experiences, uh, same fraternity. Um, I grew up in Chapel Hill, he went to Carolina, and I went to Old Dominion. Um, same friends, although we didn't know each other mm -hmm. back then. Um, 
you consume the same things, the same movies, and you understand the same references. So it was cool seeing someone that said something that you understood uh, when it's before you didn't have someone that would say something that you necessarily understood and got like that. So uh, w you talk about uh, what was what was the what was it like for him to try? Because I'm sure you had subsequent conversations when you were here. I mean, he had a lot of people tell in this building say, "No, you can't." Do it this way. I mean, it took some courage on his part. I'm going to do this. This mm -hmm. is my thing. What was that? What do you think that was like for him? And what did it say about him as a person that he? I don't believe it was easy. We never had any direct conversations about that. Just conversations about if I had a question for him, and I'll relay this story. Um, later in his illness. I had to accept an award on his behalf uh, at the National Association of Black Journalists Convention in Boston. He, Health-wise, he just couldn't be there. And I asked him, uh, said, I, I, I have to fill, I'm filling in for you on this, this speech and, and, and award thing, what do you want me to say? He said, first of all, you're no blankety blank bleeping fill in, so don't say that blankety blank stuff anymore. And two, just do you. And that was his thing, where there were people saying, you can't do that, you can't say that. He was like, this is me, this is my experience. My experience is, is with the, the alphas and the kappas and the Qs and the black fraternities and the sororities. So I make a reference to those people, whereas someone who grew up with, I don't know the other, I could just mishmash a bunch of Greek letters together, but like on Animal House. Those fraternities and sororities, it, it, some would make an Animal House reference, and like the majority would get it. And I haven't seen Animal House all the way through, but I, I've seen I've seen do the right thing, and and I've seen School Days, so I get it, and I lived it in college, so I understood the reference. So he did him, and it, it's just real tough to tell a guy you can't do you. Mm -hmm. So you kind of dig in your heels get a little angry and say, I'm just going to do me a little bit more, mm -hmm. like it or not. Well, what does it say, though, that that, that approach not only connected with the African-American population, but it connected with everybody? It says the people that were telling them not to do it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't read their audience correctly. That's what it says. It says um, outside of the little bubble that that organizations or networks or whoever may live in, there's a whole other... Uh, population, there's a whole lot of other folks who are like, no, you, we like to consume different things. Why don't you branch off and open up a little bit? That's what it says. It says we need to listen to our people more Tell as people. being the audience. So you, talk, you told us a little bit about him and what he said to you, but what was he like as a person to be around and to kind of be a part of, you know, because it See, was... I, I saw a different Stuart. I saw Stuart the dad doting on his daughters. Um, the guy on TV, um, I saw the, the quiet, introspective, thoughtful guy who's like, um, I'm just going to chill right now. When I go to work, I'll go to work. That's, that's the guy I knew. Which also let me know that TV, ESPN, Sports Center, that's what I do. It's not necessarily who I am. Mm -hmm. And I have a life outside of this, and I have to live it. If this is all my life, then there's there's, there's no balance. Right. There's something wrong. What's you know what, part of this class is examining the impact of pop culture ESPN has had. Um, what is going to be his impact on uh, Stewart's impact on pop culture? I mean, I think it says something. We have I said to I think we're talking with Rob King that when he passed away that. There were moments of silence at NFL games and, and, and NBA games. I mean, that doesn't usually happen for mm -hmm. someone. And President Obama issued a statement. Mm -hmm. What was his impact, do you, you think? You just said it. I mean, he was someone that brought joy. Um, he brought creativity. He brought smarts because he would fill every highlight with a gazillion and one numbers that when you went to the water cooler you could talk to your friends about because he said it and it would make you smarter with amongst your circle of friends because you knew Albert Pujols 
batting average for the last 10 games and how many, you knew all that stuff because he said it. Um, his impact, man, suits, ties, mannerisms. I mean, it just goes back to, again, being and doing him to give you that courage to be who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, it, it, he was a great guy and he was just a, he was a very nice person, very fun person. Like Brad Doherty, he's my example. For our first, I didn't know him. And Brad Doherty was a center with, uh, with Carolina. North Carolina yes. and then was a, a longtime player with Cleveland Cavalier, number one pick. Yes, and then he branched off doing from basketball into NASCAR. That's Brad Doherty. First time I saw Brad Doherty, it was just like, seven foot black guy walking down Franklin Street with a cowboy hat and boots and unashamed. That was Brad Doherty. He's a country boy <laughs> and will always be. And I, I like that. People like that who aren't afraid to be themselves. So I imagine you're speaking to a group of students uh, in, in the audience and some of them are going to want to sit in your chair. They probably Can't will be a little chair. more, they bills. probably had, they probably, have but they yet. probably will, they will have, they have goals and maybe not going to have someone who's pushing them. Come on, you got to take this job like you did. But um, what kind of advice would you have for them? I would imagine what you've been saying, your theme all the way through. You got to be yourself. You got to be true to who you are. Yeah, be yourself. Um, it's going to, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while to find yourself. Uh, if you get in this business, I like to tell folks that this is kind of a Xerox business. You try to find people you respect and you like, and you kind of model yourself after them. I will ask myself, I used to more than I do now, how would Brian Gumble ask this question? Or what would Peter Jennings say or do in this breaking news situation? Because they were two of my favorites. Those were my guys growing up. Um, until you get your footing, and then you find out in those situations who you really are. Um, what, what, what does Jay Harris know? What would Jay Harris say in those situations? Not necessarily Bryant or Peter anymore. Just find you and do you. It'll take a while. It takes courage to do you. I mean, just step out. Step out in faith. Be who you are. Good stuff. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. Are we done? We're done. Seriously? Well, we, we can do more. Yeah, we'll do some more. <laughs> okay, let me. Yeah, let's. Uh, if sure? we, do we have a couple of minutes? We got a couple of minutes, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so let me. Because um, one of the one of these segments is going to be on advertising, and this is Sports Center. Okay. Okay. You said you've done more than thirty. Yeah, thirty thirty one commercials. Thirty thirty one yeah. commercials. What what stands out for you about that campaign? Uh, what were your, what were some of your favorites? <laughs> um, well, the, the the one that folks seem to like is the, the simple one, the, the New Jersey Devil in right. the Elevator. Yeah, I was thinking of that one. Going up, yeah, that's pretty simple. And I, so I'll just tell people, so, and I'll probably show it to them. So you, the elevator door opens. Yeah, I'm waiting for the elevator and it opens and the, the, the devil, the New Jersey Devil mascot's on the elevator and I, I get in and I turn to him and I go, going up? And he goes, because <laughs> he's the devil. <laughs> the devil, he doesn't go up. And I all of a sudden in that moment realized that I'm on the elevator with the devil. I need to get out. And I just leave, and the door closes, and I'm safe. That's <laughs> <laughs> and that was such a simple yeah. a premise. Yeah. But it, it, it and that's the one. And that was the one I was thinking yeah. of. You know, why? It shows you how something so simple could really work so well. And, and, and well, that's the. I think that's the key to the campaign. It's very simple. It's very subtle. It's very understated. A lot of things are done with a wink and a nod, maybe a line or two, and the, the moment is what's funny. Not necessarily what you put into it, it's what the moment gives you, and you just go with it. And I, now how long did it take you to do that commercial? They Ooh, went, that one wasn't long. Yeah, okay. They, that was, I think that was after a day of shooting another one, and the director was like, hey, I have an idea, let's do this. And it kind of became what it was. <laughs> so, so this idea of these commercials, which have been some of the best in the industry, sports and beyond, um, you know, this premise of, uh, I think the idea that, that, that it, was, it shows ESPN and Sports Center as being more than just a studio show, that it's kind of a lifestyle that you guys live here and that the athletes live here. Yes. Is that the key to the success, kind of like forming that, deepening that connection between the viewers and the 
and the people like I th- you? I think the key to the success is showing their favorite anchors and or athletes in a situation that is out of the norm. Um, human, as it were, or just doing things. Like the one when I was walking around the office with Larry Fitzgerald and things started falling and he would catch everything because <laughs> that's what he does. And it's just, and we're talking about a haircut that I got. Just casual conversation and just absurd situations that happen, but he's not on the football field, I'm not on the anchor desk, we're just hanging out talking and things just happen and we react, or I don't react, he does. And he just happens to be here, it's Bristol, we're in full uniform. Yes, in full uniform, just walking around in full uniform. <laughs> right. and, yes. you know, hanging out, you know, and, and doing, I mean, some of the classic ads that were, I mean. I, uh, when I'm using Michael Phelps gold medals as coasters. Right. <laughs> were those his actual gold medals or are they replicas? Oh, I think they may have been his gold medals. Don't, don't let me lie, I'm not, I can't remember, but they were kind of loud and heavy, so they may have been his. Oh. And he gets mad because uh, I put my cup on it and, he, and I go, it's just the bronze. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, one of the great, and you said the subtle, so the one, this was with, I think with Stuart Scott and, and, uh, and Scott Van Pelt when Arnold Palmer yes. is, is going through and he's actually making an Arnold Palmer, yes. and uh, and their guys, two guys, and they kind of cut to him making the Arnold Palmer, and then they cut to Stewart and and, and, and Scott Van Pelt, and he goes, "That was awesome!" Yeah. Like really, in a very yeah. I know, you know, like they're whispering it, you know, they're watching Arnold we're fans Palmer too, right? Yeah. But the idea of it being subtle, it's yeah. not like you're trying to knock exactly. people over the head. That's it's right. like you're kind of in on this joke, That's and it, it, and yeah. it's like, "Come here, I got something to show you." Yeah, it's Arnold Palmer right there. <laughs> right. I know it's great stuff, and it really does kind of you know those are transcending ads, and it really gets to again part of the reason why this company has been so successful is doing things that are kind of different, unconventional. Yep, agreed, one hundred percent. Good. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. Thank you. Good. Great stuff. Thank you. All right.